Well, good afternoon everyone, Mike with The Locators here and I wanted to go through a bit of a tutorial on a fantastic app that every one of you that's hunting or fishing should have and it's called iHunter. In this case I bought the iHunter Alberta version but there's versions of uh, a few other provinces and territories in Canada that you can purchase if you happen to live there. So on the bottom right here, I'll just click on the icon. And generally what it will do is open up and it'll show you exactly where your location is. And this is where I live right now. You can see the blue dot in the middle. And um, yeah, so just wanted to go through a few things with you here and show you a few features. Uh, one thing, the first thing that you can do is you just push and hold on any part of uh, any field in, the, uh, in your field of view. And it'll show you in this case with Tasco in 2019. So what you can do with... Um, I hunter that I love so much is you can buy uh, county landowner maps. So if you're in a certain spot and you really wanted to hunt but you don't know who owns the land, you can go to this um, Wetaskiwin map and you can and you can see who the landowner is and then it'll at least help you with your search to to track down that landowner and and ask for permission to to hunt. So when you click on this, it'll come up and you'll see the Wetaskiwin 2019. And I'm in WMU Wildlife Management Unit 226, Hobima. So when I click on that, it'll show you all your regulations by species. In this case, with the ungulates, we've got elk and when the seasons are open. Um, you can see that there's still an elk antlerless draw open till January 20th, as there is in many WMUs in Alberta right now. Um, but it'll go through all your species. And obviously most, if not all of them, are ended. Bear, the same kind of thing. Bear and predators are on this one here. So cougars, coyotes, red fox, timber wolves, whatever it might be. And the goose icon, of course, gives you the Canada geese, ducks, partridge, rabbits, things like that. You can see at the bottom, you can click on PDF regulations, view series regulations, um, all those kind of things. So if we hit back, It'll take you out of that screen, and then if you push on there again, you can go to the Wetaskiwin County map. So, like I said, I've got the Wetaskiwin County Landover map loaded on my iHunter purchase. And so what you can see here is it says map opacity. So basically what that does is, is uh, it's got a sliding scale where you can basically pull it to the side. So we'll pull it to the right, and all of a sudden you let go and bang, your your uh, landowner maps will come up. And this is handy when you're, you know, like I said before, when you wanna try and get a hold of somebody and uh, and, and you need to um, call the farmer, you don't know what land that buck's standing on or whatever, this is a great resource. You can take it all the way over to the right and then it shows just the county map and the quarter sections, range roads, township roads, all that good stuff to get around. But then if you slide it right to the left, you don't see any of that. You just see the topography. You just see the rivers, the lakes, the hills, the sloughs, the bushes, all those kind of things. And I'd certainly encourage you to buy the, per, uh, the, um, the newest map possible because landowners change from, from time to time and year to year, sometimes even. So it's, uh, it's a fantastic resource. And as you can see, as I scroll up, I bought quite a few different maps here. Or these are the maps on the left that are available. But I have a lot of maps on my iHunter. Because when you scroll out, and if I click on here, change that opacity, you can see, bang, Wetaskiwin County. I know all the landowners in Wetaskiwin County. Up here towards Calmar, well, that's Leduc County. You go up into the, you know, north of Spruce Grove. Whoops, sorry. Up to Alberta Beach. That's the county of Lac St. Anne. So you can see I've got a lot of different maps, a lot of different places to hunt. We spend quite a bit of time in the peace country. So I'll show you what that looks like. You can see all the waypoints, all the quarter sections I have to hunt on, different travel routes, different. Uh... Sometimes when you open the iHunter app, it'll be zoomed way out and in this case you know I can see most of Alberta here right now don't really want to do that obviously 
you can see a lot of my fishing and hunting waypoints you know in that exploded view but what you want to do is hit this directional button on the bottom then you can just zoom to location and bang it'll take you right to, right back to where you started from another thing I like to show you is is creating waypoints So what you could do is press and hold on any part of the map again and you'll see this positive sign here on the left. This is where you can add waypoints. So on the top here you can see all the different icons of animals, tracks, horns, you know, lookout points, whatever you want. And you can pick six different colors for each waypoint. You can give it a title. So you could type in whatever you want there. Uh, you can type in a description as well. You could even select an image if you took a picture um, of something at that particular point, point and you wanted to capture that as the, as the icon or the image with to go along with that icon, you can do that. Or you can also click on take a photo and it'll take you to your camera and then you can uh, do as you wish there as well. Uh, one thing that you'll always see too when you're going to add a waypoint is your current weather conditions and your, uh, your location, so your, your GPS coordinates, and uh, the, the moon phase actually will, will show here as well, anytime you go to add a waypoint. Another thing you can do is click on the clouds here, and that'll give you your sunrise, sunset, exact time for your location, exactly where you're sitting. Uh, today and tomorrow, it'll give you the moon phase and the weather here again, uh, sunrise, sunset tables if you if you want to look at those as well are all in there. Another thing you can do here is you can mark distances, all kinds of things like that as well. You can mark a point from where you are and, and in this case I pointed down there to the, uh, well it'll be a little bit to the, the north and west of where I am and it'll actually show you the distance and uh, and you can figure out how long it'll take you to get there. Another thing you can do in the bottom left is, you know, you can see your current location and add a waypoint that way as well. You can enter a coordinate. You can also choose track me and what this will do is when you're walking through the through the bush and if you start walking it's gonna make a dotted breadcrumb bread trail as to as to the trail you've walked so the next time if you uh, you know and then you can save that track similar to what you can do on other GPS units and then if you want to take that exact trail the next time or whatever uh, you can certainly do that as well when you're uh, at a certain location uh, you can also text your location to your friends or to your wife say at home um, you can email your location as well through your email app on your phone zoom to location your map mode I like to keep it in free uh, because otherwise if you keep it in centered and you drag you know to another area it's gonna once you let go it's gonna want to come back um, to that centered part of the map as well and it's also got a compass feature here as well. So a lot of different things you can do with this app. I really encourage you to, uh, to take a look at it, try it out. There's all kinds of things. I mean, I, I mark all my fishing spots on lakes. Yeah, you're not gonna be within two feet of that hole that you drilled last week, but you're gonna be within, you know, five to 10 meters. That's kind of a general, um, you know, GPS accuracy that you're gonna get uh, with your phone. So it's good enough, it'll get you in the general ballpark and uh, depending on the day and where you are, it can actually be even more accurate than that. But using that along with the topographical maps, the, the satellite maps here that we're looking at, you know, these are pretty detailed and they're not necessarily up to date. Uh, they might be a year or two uh, behind in some areas uh, as far as the background imagery, but it's pretty awesome and you can really get around and get to know an area pretty quickly just by looking at the quarter section, looking at the topography, where the hills and the sloughs and the rivers and things like that might be. So certainly encourage you to give it a try. It's a fantastic app and I'm learning more and more uh, every day that I, that I use it out in the field. 
Um, you know, I'd certainly encourage those of you that haven't had a lot of experience in the bush or aren't that, um, you know, versed in, in uh, you know, GPS coordinating and, and things like that. Um, you know, this is a fantastic app that can do a lot of different things. You can do some purchasing on here. You can buy some stickers and whatnot if you want to put one on your truck or your toolbox or whatever or on your quad. You can certainly do that as well.